Hi guys, welcome to our discussion on alternative investments for CFA L1, right? So let's dive in. Right now, an alternative investment is a financial asset that does not fall into any one of the conventional investment categories like equity, debt, or fixed income. Right, the various types of alternative investments are private equity, hedge fund, real estate, commodities, and infrastructure. With real estate and commodities arguably being the oldest type of investments, right? So, real estate and commodity has been amongst mankind since time immemorial. Right now, discussing the various qualities of alternative investments. Alternative investments are subject to less regulation than traditional investments right most hedge funds and private equity do not have to register with the sec as such they are not overseen or regulated by the sec only uh, hedge funds you know with you know ex you know with assets under management exceeding a say a stated amount are required to be registered with the sec private equity firms you know with AUM exceeding a certain stated amount are required to be registered with the SEC as an investment advisor. Coming to the next point, alternative investments charge higher fees than traditional investments. Right? The fee structure of an alternative investment fund would typically include a management fees. Right, management fees is, a management fees is charged by the alternative investment fund to cover the operating cost of the fund. And incentive fee is a reward for positive returns and is a certain stated percentage of profit. Coming to the third characteristic of an alternative investment, they are illiquid, then their traditional counterparts, right? So it is difficult to ready, readily sell a real estate property compared to 100 shares of Tesla, Microsoft or Apple. You can sell or buy shares of Tesla, Microsoft, Apple at the blink of an eye, but it usually takes a lot of time to sell out from a real estate property. The fourth characteristic, the fourth characteristic is that they have a, alternative investments have low correlation with traditional investments thus provide diversification benefits so when we add alternative investments to a portfolio of traditional investments they are likely to reduce the volatility and provide diversification benefits right then alternative investments such as real estate and commodity provide a hedge against inflation so in fact what happens is that Commodity is included in the calculation of inflation and thus provides a natural hedge against inflation, right? And the last point is that returns on alternative investments depend upon the <coughs> skill of the manager. Now, the idea behind this is, guys, that equity and bond markets are pretty much efficient, right? All public and private information is reflected in the prices of equity and in the prices of bond but alternative investments are basically you know they operate in a market which is inefficient all publicly and private information is not reflected in the prices of the alternative assets right and you know it depends upon the skill of the manager to exploit these inefficiencies right it depends upon how skilled the manager is right so if the manager is you know very skilled he would be able to exploit these inefficiencies and make active returns but if the manager is not so skilled he may not be able to spot such inefficiencies in the alternative investments assets right so a lot has to do with the skill of the manager the last point being guys that you know these alternative investment funds do invest in traditional assets like stocks and bonds it's not mandatory that alternative investment fund would only invest in alternative assets they tend to invest in traditional assets such as stocks so this completes our first los now coming to the second los or oh, before that guys what is the reason behind which investors you know why is uh, why are investors attracted to invest in the alternative asset market the first reason is that you know it provides a hedge against inflation we've already discussed that commodities are included in the calculation of inflation thus providing a natural hedge 
right then we have also discussed that alternative investments have no correlation with traditional assets so if we add alternative assets to a portfolio of stocks and bonds right that would tend to reduce the volatility of such a portfolio and thus provide diversification benefits right and the third idea is that see alternative investment you know uh, alternative assets tend to be mispriced right because alternative investment markets are not so efficient so if there is a skilled manager who can exploit these inefficiencies the returns on on alternative assets can exceed the returns on traditional investments so these are the main reasons why people invest in alternative investments now we'll understand the structure of the alternative investment market Right. So the alternative invest, you know, the alternative investment funds are structured as a limited partnership. Right. In a limited partnership, there are two entities. One is the GP, and the other is an LP. The GP is basically the fund manager. He plays an active role in managing the fund, and he has unlimited liability. Right. So he bears unlimited liability for anything that might go wrong. Right. And then there is an LP. the lp is basically an accredited investor right and the lp would typically invest in the alternative investment fund right and his liability is limited to the amount that he has invested and he plays a passive role right he is not involved in the day to day activities of the alternative investment fund right the basic idea why an alternative investment fund is structured as a limited partnership guys we can look here right that the gp is investing only 5% of the total capital of the fund right and the investors are investing the remaining 95% but in spite of this the gp has the control over the alternative investment fund right he plays an active role in the managing he plays an active role in managing the fund so the gp is you know gp retains the control because of this limited partnership structure the gp retains the control in the fund right without investing a large amount in the fund right without investing a large amount in the fund so so the basic idea is that the gp is able to raise capital without giving control of the fund right and we should not confuse limited partnership with limited liability partnership right so in limited partnership the limited partner has a limited liability but a gp has an unlimited liability under an nlp right the marked difference between a limited partnership and a limited liability partnership is that under limited liability partnership under limited liability partnership all partners have limited liabilities and all partners play an active role in managing the fund right now these limited you know these limited partners in the alternative investment fund are accredited investors or sophisticated investors who understand the risks of what they are getting into right see though alternative investment funds are not heavily regulated right they you know they escape the regulation right uh, of the sec but guys that is why they are made accessible only to accredited investors right or sophisticated investors right and typically an accredited investor would be a person who has a net worth of more than 1 million dollars which should exclude the house in which he resides or an accredited investor must have a net income of more than 200000 dollars in the last two financial years or the accredited investors must have uh, you know a net income of 300000 dollars with his and his spouse income combined in the last two financial years right so so the idea is that you know only accredited investors can get into these alternative investment funds right it's not accessible to the general people it's usually accessible to sophisticated investors who understand the risk and return of what they are getting right these are the ideas of alternative investment 